Hey guys, welcome to part three of patient assessment and general care of the Neopedes for respiratory 3260. This last video for this little section is going to cover clinical asthma scoring and modified Wesley scoring. So the clinical asthma scoring is for a child that is um, dealing with an asthma exacerbation. And there are a lot of triggers that can occur to have an asthma exacerbation. Um, if the asthma is poorly managed is part of it. It's this top one here. Um, also, if there are just a lot of different things, the most common thing you'll see is a upper respiratory infection. That is the most common one you'll see. And sometimes with those, it doesn't matter how well the asthma is managed, colds will set off asthma very commonly. A few others might be pet, dan pet dander, um, changing of the seasons, sports, athletics, anything like that. So with that, we have our respiratory rate assessment based on age, whether they are ages one to five or um, older than age five. Their wheezing, their retractions, observed dyspnea, because a lot of kids will be in kind of a panic, which rightfully so, if they are experiencing an asthma exacerbation. Um, and then their I to E ratio, because some kids will have it change. They'll, because they can't really get that breath out, it might be a little bit of a struggle for them. So then again, down here, we can see our respiratory assessment, whether they are in a mild, um, a moderate or a severe asthma exacerbation. And again, I don't have these memorized. Not very many people do. So it's just handy to have it either in your charting, um, whatever your company gives you, or else attached to your badge if you work with pediatrics. This is called the Modified Wesley Score. It is used for Strider. The most common times you will uh, see Strider and assess it is either a foreign body aspiration, which this would not really come into play because we know what the obstruction is and we know how to fix it. We need to get that foreign body out. The modified Wesley score is most commonly used for situations with croup, where um, the tissues of the upper airway become inflamed, which narrow it. And you'll see on an x-ray what's called a steeple, which basically it just goes in and out. It kind of looks almost like an hourglass to me. Um, and we are going to use different medications and assessments for croup situations or strider situations. So we assess for strider. If you can hear it audibly, if or if you hear with the, your stethoscope or not hear it at all. Retractions, because if you think about it, if you can't move air in your upper airway, you can't move it in your lower airway. Air entry, um, again, if we're not moving air in our upper airway, we won't move any in our lower airway, so we'll have very decreased breast sounds. Um, cyanosis, whether it's at rest or with agitation, and level of consciousness. If the baby or the child is just completely lethargic, that's an issue. And we can assess down here. So for common medications you guys will give, for the Wesley scoring and croup situations, you'll give racemic epinephrine or a cool mist. This will be to decrease. So what it, racemic epinephrine is, is it's a vasoconstrictor and it targets the upper airway because we're nebulizing it. The vasoconstriction will help shrink that inflamed tissue to help improve aeration. Um, one way I, you can tell it's working, this is kind of a weird assessment, but to me personally, it sounds like a hollow breathing if I know it's working because you can finally hear some resonance occur, resonance occurring. Um, it's very important with both racemic epinephrine and any other bronchodilator to assess before and after to check for the effectiveness. Um, you will give albuterol as a rescue for asthma exacerbations. And then you will also work on teaching and education of inhaled corticosteroids for maintenance. So to move on with that, when administering let me see if I can get this in shot, sorry. You will use an SVN to administer with a cushion mask, which will place over the child's face. There's a couple different ways you can put these together. You can either block this end, have the corrugated tubing 
and then the cushion mask. Or you could stick the tubing here, get a different adapter for your mask to go here. And then I do this for the older kids. I can get this adapter if I can get it out. Nope. Um, then I will try to make it fun. With pediatrics, you're allowed to be a little bit extra and a little bit fun. So if I have a kid that's crying through it but being good, I'll be like, can you pretend to be a choo-choo train? Can you go choo-choo? Um, so while their SVN is nebulizing, they can pretend to be a choo-choo train and puff. There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Um, just try to find what works for each individual child to make it a little more fun and less scary because they're going to find the sound scary. One little girl, um, the back pressure went up and this popped off right here and it was loud and she, from then on, thought I was the scary lady because my neb popped off here. You'll run this at the seven liters as we do with a normal nebulizer. Um, and you'll find the most appropriate fitting mask. This mask is too big for this, but this is also neo neonate. Um, but you'll find an appropriate fitting mask and find different things. Like you can sing songs, paint pictures, blow bubbles, anything to help distract them and get them to take their treatment appropriately. It, as we improve with an asthma exacerbation and to go home on, it is very common to send children home on MDIs. They are fast, they're well tolerated, just with appropriate um, education, they're an excellent tool for at-home asthma care. So this is a placebo albuterol I have. Then we have our chamber, which as um, same as with adult, we use that for more medication to enter into the lungs, less into the mouth, and for the bigger particles to adhere to the spacer. And then you can get a mask. This is one that's specifically for pediatrics. Um, others, you can find ones that have attachments for a cushion mask to go over the child's face to have them breathe. You can use the same spacer for, say, the child is on both albuterol and something such as Flovent, whatever is ordered for them you can use the same spacer, you just switch it out for the back here. Okay, and the last thing is sometimes whether you're dealing with um, pneumonia, cystic fibrosis, or even um, bronchopulmonary dysplasia patients, you might have to help break up secretions in the lungs. So there, CPT is used in the neonatal pediatric world. These are two common ones you'll see. You can also just use a cushion mask. And when I'm in the delivery room and I have a baby that has some thick secretions, I'll just use my mask resuscitation. Um, this one is just a handheld one and you can position your patient or your baby how it works best for you. And apply your CPT. Remember, same rules apply. You don't wanna go any, over any bony processes or uh, anywhere that might there might be scarring or injury. This one goes like this, over top the chest, over top your consolidation to help break up those secretions. And then with neonates, I always make sure I suction their mouth. With a pediatric child, you could ask them to cough or sneeze. So these three videos were a little bit fast, kind of quick and dirty, so let me know if you guys have any further questions. Call, text, or email me. Um, this is just general assessment, general care, and general monitoring. And I will see you guys in class. Thanks.